Hello and welcome to another Monday live stream. This Monday, this week, I should say, um, I just want to continue on with this wonderful design by Sandro Clouseau, and um, I've just been having a lot of fun with it. So I'm going to continue. It's been a lot of fun. So I'm just working on the body. This is where I left off last Monday. I may have done a few things um, offline after the stream, but this is where we're at. So welcome. Hope you're having a wonderful week so far. I mean, it's just Monday, right? <laughs> okay, let's see. Da, da, da. Need to share my stuff here. Typical. They always hide things. And when I say they, I mean, I mean, Facebook. And then for some reason, Facebook just when I try to share to a page anymore, it just doesn't let me. <laughs> I don't know why. Weird. There's no like share. <laughs> oh, stupid. Oh, well. Anyway, welcome. Welcome. Hello. Hey, Neil. Gamut HD. Thanks for the comment on my video HD, by the way. I just barely saw it. Um, what video I'm talking about is I'm getting back on YouTube on my own channel. So if you look up 3D Character Workshop on YouTube and find my channel, you'll see it there. Um, I think, Neil, I don't know if you would mind posting a link, but I'm getting back into uh, doing helpful tip, tips and tricks. Not getting back into, I'm, I'm getting into. Uh, like a, I wanna do just really short tips and tricks weekly videos for you that you can go back out or, or go go check out every week that's the goal that's the idea and the first one was how to use this this chisel brush right here to scribe in detail lines um, but i use them all the time towards the end of the projects you know when i want to scribe in some detail lines and i show you exactly how to, how to do it so um you can check that out hey steve hey stefano how's it going thirsty minds hello everybody okay so I'm still blocking out this character, believe it or not. This is like, what is it, week week three on this? I'm just blocking it out. It's been a lot of fun. And yep, um, okay, speaking of which, um, you'll notice that my user interface has changed. Maybe you noticed, maybe you didn't. But um, as you can see, there's some new new things and I made a new brush. And this new brush is gonna help me with um, making the hair on the top of his head so I've been messing with um, Orb Cracks brush, which is a phenomenal brush, by the way. That's actually what this brush started out as. Um, and then I tweaked it and adjusted it, some settings and made it so it would uh, work with my tablet a little bit better. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to be giving that brush away as well with my user interface that's been updated for ZBrush 2022. So, all right, with that being said, um, be on the lookout for that soon okay i'm going to turn off perspective and get to it how have you all been this last week how do you make the toy plastic material eye without making the other layer toy plastic um well i'll, I'll show you really quick so uh, I'll, I'll do it on so i was going to do it on the eye but i'll do it on something a little more apparent like the the nose well let's do it on this uh on this beard for example Okay, so right now, by default, nothing is is filled with a material, nothing. It's all just temporarily, it's kind of like, um, yeah, it's just a temporarily, a temporary sheen on the surface of everything and it overlays your color. That's why I like Skin Shade 4 so much is because it's not um, taking away from the underlying vertex coloring, which is polypaint. Um, it's just showing you essentially what the color of the, the object is. So um, that's why I don't ever use any of these colored materials because it will, it will mix with the poly paint underneath. Like I, I don't use these, the skin or any of this stuff. The only other material you, you'll see me use is eye, eye shaders, the toy shader that you're talking about, or I should say material, not shader. And um, Sometimes I'll use some Zebra ones. Oh, I don't have them here. Um, I haven't, I haven't, this is a ZBrush 2022. 
I wish they had a migration thing that I could just migrate all my stuff over, but um, I use Zebro materials. You can find those on the internet. Uh, Zebro Gray, Zebro Modeler, I believe it's called. Um, and those show me my surface details a little bit better than the skin shade. So skin shade shows my poly paint well, while the other ones show my surface detail well. Okay, so um, let's see. So toy, but toy plastic ships with ZBrush, so I can grab that really quick. I just gotta find it. it's toy plastic. And when you click on that, you'll notice that it fills, it's not really filling, but it's displaying that material on every single subtool. Because like I said, no material has been filled on any of these uh, subtools. But let's just say I wanna select this one and I'm gonna fill it with this material. So what I do, what I usually do is I'll, I'll select my paintbrush. You can honestly select any brush really. And then just click on this material channel up here that says M. So there's RGB, which is the actual poly paint color. And then there's M, which is the, for the material channel. And then just click this fill object button. And it, it doesn't look like it did anything, but it essentially just filled this object with the toy plastic material. Now, if I go back to skin shade four, you'll see that that material is still on this beard because I filled it, but it's not on the rest because those really don't have any materials assigned to them. Does that make sense? So, um, Anyway, that's, that's how you do it. Now, how, how you clear a material off an object um, is pretty easy. All you have to do is go back to this, um, that's why it's on my interface, is this flat color right here. So if you click on this flat color, it will show you and tell you if any of your objects have a material filled on that object. You can clearly see that the beard does. So let's clear it off. We have, again, the, heart, the, the paintbrush with material selected, flat color selected, hit fill object, and that will clear the material right off of that, that material, okay? And so now it's just cleared. It just deletes it, essentially. So if I go back to skin shade, there you go. All right, got it, awesome. So let's see, oh, thanks, Neil. I have an issue with the transpose tool in the update. I can't use the bending trick anymore. Oh, really? Let's try it out, that's weird. Um, let's bend, let's bend this arm right here. Okay, so let's switch over to the transpose tool. And bend it. Ah, interesting. Wow. Yeah, it's broken. Well, I will, I will mention that to Pixelogic and let them know that it's broken, because that's not good. <laughs> All right, let me make a note of that really quickly. So I, I don't work for Pixelogic. I'm just a volunteer here on their channel. But I do have contact contact with them so I can reach out and, uh, and let them know. Thank you for that. Okay, let's get to it. Um, let's see, where were we at? I want to do a tail on him, obviously. His little, his little pointy uh, devil tail. We can throw that in there really quick. Oh, come on. Oh, that is the wrong color. And let's make sure we're off of, I, I always forget, but I, you want to switch back to RGB after you're done doing any, any material based anything. Okay. Some, so I just like to do tails that are just straight, just straight out here. I'm gonna actually draw it again with this uh, gizmo reset. If you reset the gizmo and then you go to draw out and insert multi-mesh and then you hold down shift, it will snap. And then what I'm doing here with this insert multi-mesh brush, if you drag out an insert multi-mesh brush and then if you push it back in, like so, you will scale it back on the other two axes. It's not broken, it just needs to use focal shift that's not minus 100. As of the latest update, focal shift 
works with gizmo it does oh interesting interesting okay okay wow all right I, now i want to let's bend this tail let's try and bend it why didn't that snap anyway huh that's really strange because it, it usually snaps to the last known location of the appendage or of the that's another thing that's not really there it goes okay it's working strange okay well learning some new stuff okay so let's switch back over to here and let's do focus shift zero right there on the transpo transpose brush and let's try it out yeah look at that interesting okay so what if we what if we grab that focus and drop it down nice so you can actually adjust the fall off of how much it oh man look at look at that that's cool it's so what it's doing is it's changing the bell curve away from a bell curve i actually like that better that's sweet okay well thanks for that is that i don't know how you say your name is it tight Zatai 3D, thank you very much. Okay, well, I'm not going to bend it just yet, though. But it's good to know that you can do that. That's awesome. That's a brand new awesome thing. Okay, so I, I usually like to just keep my tail straight until later on. Let's, I'm going to split it off to... So then I can squish this. I'm going to use this clip curve and just kind of clip it straight right here. Uh, will you be releasing your new UI soon? Yes. And thank you, Neil. Um, yeah, we're just testing it right now. And as soon as it clears testing, I'm going to, I'm going to send it out. So, um, yeah, as you'll notice, there there have been some changes here. Um, well, I'm, I don't want to go through. I actually made a video talking about all the new stuff that's changed in the in the user interface. But you can just you can see that that a handful of small things have changed. One of the biggest things is this new uh, carve brush. Um, yeah, I've made a I've made a carve brush to help with hair. So and it's it's actually based on this character right here that i'm working on i'm going to make his hair hopefully get to it today pronounced it fine okay hey charlie how you doing i did reach out to uh sandro today to let him know i'm i'm working on this and i'd love to hear what he what his thoughts are okay Okay, so with the with the uh, triangle, I'm just going to block in a, a triangle down here. I'm not going to try and warp this into the triangle. Because um, when I can just stitch one in, you know, there's no reason to. Um, so I'm actually going to start with a sphere. And just pull it out. And I have to give my wife a shout out. It's her birthday today. So sometimes she watches these, sometimes not. But my wife's name is Kim. Happy birthday, Kim. Love you. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, let's see. Now, on this, this is the perfect 
perfect thing for AccuCurve. Using the move brush, turn on AccuCurve and you can get pointier, pointier points. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> Looks about right, huh? All right. <laughs> if any of you are watching uh, Ashley's <laughs> Ashley's uh, live stream, A cubed, <laughs> she was she was trying to explain where tails come out. They don't come down out down here. They come out above at the end of your spine. And actually, eventually, um, they come out like, oh goodness, that is interesting. Check that out. So that is also a result of the focal shift fall off on the gizmo. Okay, okay. Did you see that? You guys, look, so when I rotate this, look at this. It gets more and more curl curved. That whoa! I shouldn't. <laughs> okay. Hey Gumby, yes. Um, I am. I'm working on a. I, I'm working on something. So as long as you're on my emailing list, did you get my email today? As long as you're on my emailing list and you're getting my emails, then I'm going to be sending out um information on that later on this week, probably sooner than later. I'm like, whoa, that's looking a little, little phallic there. But uh, but check this out. Okay, I will hide the devil so it doesn't look too phallic. But check this out. That's crazy. Okay, you did get my email. Awesome. Okay. And if you're not on my emailing list, why not? <laughs> um, just head on over to 3dcharacterworkshop.com and download my, my free brushes and my user interface. It's not this one quite yet. But uh, I will be sending out another email with this updated user interface and brushes. And you will, and I'm also, uh, I started back, I started my YouTube channel back up and I'm gonna be doing weekly YouTube videos uh, with tips and tricks, so. And I'm going to be talking about um, a lot of ZBrush videos, but also other software as well. So if you're interested, hop on there and get on that emailing list, okay. Okay, so I, I wanna I wanna play with that a little bit more, like uh, the focus shift. So if this is at minus one hundred, then it's there, and if this is at like twenty seven, that is wild. Okay, I I watched somebody actually pose um, with this, and uh, it was it was very interesting how that worked. So what does zero do? Okay, so it has kind of this fall off. It goes down to the end. That's almost a little more useful than the transpose line, I'll have to say. Interesting. Okay, okay. But for now, I just wanted up minus 100. Anyway, what I was trying to say with this is um, where, where tails, if you look at like animals, how their tails work, is it's an extension of their spine, which kind of comes out about here in this direction, right? So, okay, enough playing with the tail. <laughs> okay. Shorter. Okay. Done with the tail. Because I will be curve. I, I want to curl that with using the um, the bend curve modifier, which gives you a lot more control. Okay. It's one thing just to bend an object in in a direction, you know, like with that with that gizmo fall off, but it's a total other thing to oppose something using a modifier like that. 
Okay, so let's uh, let's work on this hair. And the next, I'm gonna give you guys a preview of the next the next YouTube video coming up as well, and show you how to do some cut lines around the uh, the horns if I can get to that today as well. Okay, so let's do this hair. Okay, I'm actually going to yeah, let's just do this. And split mass points. It's funny because I have adjusted this menu as well. I've made it a little bit shorter. Um, I moved some masking things down here, which I actually got rid of the masking inside of the, the custom menu. And I've added um, store morph target instead of masking. And then I put the stager, the home stage target stage down here um, from the new staging stuff. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about the, the new user interface. Looks like I don't have any color colors filled in with this uh, these horns. So it changes color, whatever I select. <laughs> okay. Okay, and also this hair is a little strange because I I need to adjust how it works because this almost looks like, you know, as if you were to take um, like craft hair, like, you know, you buy like craft hair or or something and just glue it onto a head that it's it's just not looking like it's growing out of his head. So I need to uh, change how it works right here. I'm, pr I'm probably going to split it into two pieces, one going up and creating the, the hair in the behind his horn, and then the other one going down. And then they'll, they'll cross each other right at the, the above the ear line where, the, where it changes direction. But yeah, the way it's drawn, it, it, it's kind of a, an interesting, <laughs> uh, the hair doesn't really work that way. So anyway, and it's the same with this, right? all this hair growing out from here, but it would have a part down in the middle for it to go a little forward as well. So we're gonna, I gotta, I gotta think about that as I'm doing this, this hair right now. Okay, turn off Ac AccuCurve. I, I wonder if I can get a, a hotkey for AccuCurve. We be making new videos with the new features of ZBrush and the UI in the student workshop. Um, I no, they'll be on they'll be on YouTube, but I I was gonna put some links to them in the workshop so they're easily findable. Yes, so you don't have to go to YouTube to to look at them. But they will be since since there's more than just um, workshop students uh, using the interface. I want to make it publicly available. But I won't be making a separate one, if that's your question. Hey, what's up? What's, how's it going? Okay. I turned the transparent on so I can see through this horn, see how far back it's going. I also installed the ZBrush Startup Utility, and I have to say I love it. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it is right here, this Z Startup Utility. And where you can get that is over on the um, Pixelogic Downloads page. Let's see, on the Plugins Download page. So let me bring it down and hide the cursor fix there we go okay so if you if you're on it's basically pixelogic.com forward slash zbrush forward slash download center forward slash plugins but if you just do a google search for zbrush plugins or zbrush downloads something like that um you'll see that they they, they haven't been updated for 2021 yet or 2022 yet but all of these work in 2022 okay 
and you'll see in this blue it says these are all the ones that are included so don't worry about any of these because you already have them but if you scroll down about halfway you'll see this other blue text box right here it says the plugins listed below are not included in the default initialization of zbrush so uh, if you want any of these there's some cool ring stuff um, but if you scroll down you'll see this one called z startup utility and what this does is it essentially remembers the state at which you leave zbrush in or the state that you want it to start up in when you first start up zbrush so uh, you're not always you know turning things off or on as you start every session of zbrush and uh, here here's my settings if you want to know so it will store whatever material you have on here um, it will start in edit mode um, it will store whatever current brush you have selected um, it will have local symmetry turned on it will close the light box so you know how light box will open uh, in, in the beginning of every every session um, it will have this is the big one this is why i got it right neil this is the big one um spotlight project off that means if you're using an image as a uh, as a concept right here as as reference if you have spotlight project turn uh, turned on your brushes aren't going to work so you want to have that off and it's kind of a gotcha it gets you every single time it does me and i'm like why aren't my brushes working so uh that's a that's a big one and then store spotlight images that just means when you close zbrush it's going to remember this image and store it so when you open zbrush again it will still be there so you don't have to uh, upload it again and then um, this is another big one for me in particular is remember sculptress settings because i always turn off adaptive size for sculptress and now it remembers so that's awesome yeah it closes light box for you when you first start up and then just remember to hit install custom startup after you do these settings and it will remember and so every time you start up zbrush again it will remember everything so shouldn't the ellipse the ellipses in his ear actually be whole a whole so um i'm kind of reading it like uh this this rear one is a hole and this front one is that little ear nub so same with this this ear right here this back one would be the depression in the ear and the front one would be the little i don't even know what you call it you know that little nub you'll see a lot of stylized characters they'll over exaggerate that little ear nub it's just kind of a yeah just a just a stylization choice okay so let's let's go with this with this hair and now i'm going to show you how to how i've been doing this hair it's really it's really nice and what this new brush does okay so i'm going to apply this uh i've, I've moved dynamic from over here to up here dynamic subdivisions and the reason why is because i wanted to have thickness um out on the user interface because i use thickness all the time with my dynamic subdivisions but you'll notice how how wide the slider is so i couldn't put it over here or it will double the width of this side ui so i had to move it up here but i'm going to hit apply on this that just applies the subdivisions and then delete them and another thing that i moved that i use all the time is uh, i use tessimate but instead of digging down into the tool menu to find tessimate i actually put it right next to sculptress which is what i use it for it's kind of a it's a dino topo flood fill, if you will. <laughs> okay. Um, oh yeah, thanks, Mark. Mark, you're always on the spot with those. Uh, Tragus, the Tragus. I it, it's funny, I was watching Paul DC on one of his live streams and I'm like, you mean the ear nubbin? And he just laughed. <laughs> I'm like, yep, it's an ear nubbin. <laughs> Tragus. When I think of Tragus, I think of Traeger, like those smokers. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, basically you'll see the slider see how it says polygon size i never really used um un un subdivide for for uh sculptress pro because it affected the smooth settings and i didn't really use it much so i just replaced that with tessimate so ear nubbin is way more fun and more um it's funner to say and it's you can remember it okay <laughs> all right so I basically, uh, this is kind of like using, um, 
what is it called, decimate a little bit. That's why they named it tessimate, tessimate, decimate. They're kind of similar, but this is kind of adjustable where it caches the initial mesh state. And then you can move this slider back and forth to make it more or less dense. And yes, it is rebuilding your entire mesh. So if you have any poly paint on your mesh, it's going to destroy it, just know that. And it's kind of like a Dynamesh in a way, but it, it does a different algorithm and uses more triangles. And that's okay because we're gonna be using Sculptress Pro, which works well with triangles. So, okay. And I just wanted to flood fill it. It's, I think of it like uh, if any of you are oil painters, um, back in the day, you would kind of prep your canvas with this thing called, or this stuff called gesso. And it was like this thick um, kind of, you, you could add some texture and cover the, the canvas so it wasn't so clothy, I guess. So it'd give you a nice base to paint. And that's kind of what this is doing. It's kind of filling the mesh with a nice uh, flood fill, a nice state to start your sculpting on. Wait, I was rearranging some stuff on the UI after updating it. I didn't realize you could dock a folder to the UI. Got rid of Ziri Mesh and Dynamesh. Wait a minute. You can dock a folder? Are, are you talking about are you talking about like you can you can do this? Like put it over here, over here, like uh like you can grab this and move it and let go. Is that what you're talking about? Like docking a when you say folder, I'm like are you talking about folder, like in like a subtool folder? Or are you talking about a, a, a user interface list like this? Um, so I'll, I'll do that once again for you guys, if you wanna know. And that's how I do the brushes when I'm working on brushes or my user interface when I'm making my own menu. My own menu is, is actually a menu right here. Not like in the UI where your buttons are. Like, like uh, like on the side I don't I guess I don't know what you're talking about Oh thanks Katri thank you so much Okay so now that this is flood filled I wish Blitz I wish you could show like like send me a video and show me maybe you send me a video like make a little video on uh like loom or something that's free and just say, just if you could just show me what you're talking about, that'd be great. Because I don't understand what you mean. <laughs> okay. So check this out. This is this is the new Carve brush. Like I said, it was based on the Orb Cracks brush. But I went in and made it. I, I want to use it specifically for hair. And uh, I made it taper and just added some a, a few different things. to. Uh, so it's not like the, the Orb's brush so much. But I, I'll, I suggest you all to go grab the Orbs brushes. They're amazing. Okay, so I think I do want a little bit more resolution on this. There we go. Yeah, there we go. That's looking good. So it has a nice taper. Looks like a bicycle seat. Yeah, Katri, I'm I I may be part I may be taking part in that. One of them, anyway. I did take a, I did take part in that the the last day. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I love those guys. Okay, so I can turn on Sculptress, and um, what's really cool now, having having this uh, tessimate size right below the subdivide size, I can see exactly what I have my current subdivide settings set to my testimate settings so now what i can basically do is i can say okay it's already set at one or point one zero nine if i want to be exact and now when i use this brush with sculptress it's going to um keep it the same hey chris how's it going you tried the so much zbrush play oh yeah for sure um so if if you're a student of mine inside of the 3, 3d character workshop i actually did an interview with joe from so much monsters and uh we we go through his plugin step by step and he just he shows it and uh does a does a demo of it and he's yeah he's awesome i love joe he's great but uh yeah so much monsters he does he does some really cool plugins he does a 
he works in games, so um, one of his plugins is getting it, getting your character pushed over to a game engine with like, om it's almost a one button push. It's like a three button push to get your character into a game just for some uh, biz dev. Really cool. Hey, what's up, James? How you doing? Okay, so let's rock this. There we go. Love that. Okay, I am going to turn off symmetry. Let's see, maybe a cut right there. Hmm. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, I'll be pulling these hairs to make some some better pulling on his hairs. <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna go from from this side down. Oh, Neil, you were asking me what I was listening to. I'm listening to, well, you know me. I'm listening to 80s stuff, 80s synth. <laughs> that's my, that's my thing. Uh, what is the three best plugin he, that he created you're talking about? Because I'm using Unity and for Unreal. Um, I think it's Unreal. Um, I can't remember what the name of it is called. It's been a while. Sorry. There we go, there we go. So I was listening to a little bit of AHA, like hunting high and low, that's good. Sometimes it's good to just redraw these hairs until you get something you like. I don't like that though. Maybe I'll just do a bigger. I don't want to get it too even is what I'm trying to avoid. Maybe if I do a reverse one. Sorry, this is taking, sometimes it takes a minute. Okay, I think I'm gonna be happy with that and just start pulling hairs out. Zebras 22 has a glitch whenever I use clay brush, a screen shows up but disappears. Oh, I didn't turn this back on. Is my cursor, is my cursor still? Yes, gosh dang it. <laughs> Stupid cursor. All right, they didn't fix that. Um. Use the clay brush, the screen shows up but disappears if I undo it again. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, As you'll notice, my the clay buildup brush is gone off my interface because I just don't use it very much. So I, I decided, you know, just to kind of pull it off, pull it away from the uh, my user interface because I don't use it. Okay. But if you use it, feel free to put it back. It's easy to do. Okay, Accu Curve. Hey, you know, <laughs> hey Schroeder, I have not, uh, I have not, I've been so busy, I haven't had the chance to use it yet. It's so silly. Okay, this. So, <laughs> interesting, but okay. So see this move infinite depth? Basically it shoots all the way down through. So it moves both sides of your mesh, like guaranteed. So that's why it's making this big, huge, like wedge door stop as I'm pulling it out. And I want that, I'll be, um, I'll be, I'll be squishing it so it's not so 
thick, but actually let me let me make it thinner to start with. Okay. Let's get rid of that for a second. And I, I, I like to keep pieces like this thick in the middle and thin on the edges for 3D printing. So it looks, it looks thinner than it is, but it actually gets thick in the center for mass and support. But, and I do this with clothing too. I don't want it to curve that much. Hold on, sorry. <laughs> Start over. I'm not not doing the best job today. That's okay. Just gonna stretch it out a little bit. I'm trying to th just thin it out. See how it's hopefully thinning it out a little bit. Smooth it. Okay. And I'll carve in some more lines on the back because you'll be able to see it, but back face mask the smoothing actually. Oh. It's just telling me that back face mask does not work with Sculptors Pro. Because it doesn't. Auto masking does not work with Sculptors Pro. Okay. I'm going to try just the move brush with AccuCurve rather than the uh, move infinite and see what that get, gets us. There we go. So what are you guys working on, if anything? Hopefully you guys like to sculpt along with me. I hope these sessions inspire you to get, to get some art done, get some characters sculpted. even if it's not characters. Working on a page for a book, nice. Like illustrated book or writing or both? Okay, I'm, I'm obviously going to need more hairs in here because this is looking too even across here. Pen or mouse? I always use a pen. Don't use a mouse to sculpt with. Children's Illustrated Book. Nice. Sounds fun. Okay, I might pull. Been working on some character sculpting practice. I've been working on 3D models again. Nice. Yes, I do know Dylan. Uh huh. I might switch to snake hook because it generates geometry as I go, but sometimes it doesn't behave as well as I want it to.
Yeah, I love Dylan's work. I don't like that one. I'm gonna undo it. Up, 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 up. Okay. But I do want to break this up a little more. That's what I'm looking to do. Hey, Atri, how you doing? How I, I have to ask, how many of you guys are here from like following the link in the email that I sent out today? I'm just curious. I'm just trying to get a little more. I've, I've got almost 200 people watching right now, which is great. I'm trying to get a little more viewership. A little more awareness. Hey, Battle Bear, how's it going? Hey, Brad. Let's open it up. Oh, I gotta, sometimes I wish I could toggle AccuCurve on and off with a with a hotkey. that up there we go I use a tablet without buttons and I have a big keyboard I don't use shortcuts and it's very uncomfortable I have I have a keyboard underneath I have a Cintiq which is a, a monitor that acts like a tablet so it's but when I'm working on my laptop I have a tablet with a with a keyboard um, but the reason I designed this interface this way is to use as few hotkeys as possible everything's kind of at my fingertips so um, basically the only the only e or the only I said email because I read your comment email the only hotkey I use is is the number two and it's not not not, not the number two on my number keypad but the number two on the regular keyboard and that's just my pop-up menu. And then what I do is I, uh, I assign that to the back button on my pen. So then it will just pop up underneath my pen wherever I need it. And these are my most used items. So um, I'm not digging in menus or using hotkeys very much at all. And uh, there's, and I, yeah. So th th I just keep my left hand over on the control shift and alt and uh, just use that pop-up menu for this. All right, HD, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for the comment again. Um, let's see, the email link was a good reminder, but when I remember, I usually pop in and watch. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, how long have you been sculpting? I'm a beginner and I saw the stream for the first time. Any advice for me? Uh, so I've been sculpting for close to 23 years, I want to say. Not sculpting. I've been, I've, I've worked in the game industry um, like as a character modeler and a character animator and a character rigger, you know, on and off my whole career doing those different things. And, uh, but sculpting, like character sculpting, I've probably been doing it for six or seven years, give or take. Let's see. According to you, the greatest sculptor ever lived, Michelangelo. <laughs> uh, I yes, yes, definitely. I don't know about ever lived, but he was he was you know obviously he's like one of the masters, right? Um, let's see, uh, Black Friday offer, yes. So just just be on my emailing list, and I'll be uh, sending out 
some, I, I do want to do a promotion pretty soon. Um, oh, you were asking what, any advice? Um, the, the advice that I have is just to start sculpting. Um, and sculpt, sculpt often and don't sculpt with, or sculpt with intention, like uh, the intention of getting better. Um, I have, like I teach a 3D character workshop. That's what's above me in my head. And what I do in that workshop is um, I give people kind of uh, things to, to practice and build upon. So the very first week of uh, 3D character workshop 2.0 that's coming out very, very soon, the very first week I have the students um, block out Saturday morning cartoons and just practice just blocking out characters. Like this is still in the block out stage right now. I, I haven't, like I haven't sewn any of these parts together yet. These are still in the block out. They're all separate pieces. So, um, and even his, his face, it's all in separate product, uh, separate pieces. So I, it's very, very important to learn that first. And then I take you into stylized anatomy and then how to stitch it all together and how to do uh, all, all sorts of stuff like that. Hey, what's up, Jared? How's it going, man? Let's see. Yeah, when I worked for Disney for 10 of those years, uh, Disney Interactive, I worked for Acclaim, Sony, a uh, company called Glyphix, a company called Sapphire, um, company called No Wonder. So yeah, I've been, I've been in the industry for a little while. <laughs> okay. I'm going to come through and just kind of run the pinch brush down a couple of these. I just keep looking at this hair and I want to fix it before I move on here. Whoa, that was a strange thing. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, yes, I, Neil has been sharing it. Um, would you mind Neil? And it, it's not free if that's what you're wondering. And it, yes, it is open to everyone of all skill levels from beginner to advanced. It's been open for about four years. I have a lot of students, a lot of which are in here watching right now. So if you want to I'll tell you if they like it or not, <laughs> hopefully. Okay. All right, Henry, you just get on it by um, downloading my free brushes on my website and that gets you on the list. So. If you go to 3dcharacterworkshop.com and scroll down about halfway until you see this blue space to enter your name and email, um, that will get you on the emailing list. And you, it will also give you my uh, user interface and brushes for ZBrush. It's not this updated user interface. I'm still working out the kinks on this one, but uh, it's very, very similar to this one. The vertices you make look very clean. Does it work in animation? Not not right now, but I could make it work in animation eventually. So if you want to see another character, I, I just happen to have my cowboy pulled up right here because I was looking at it for something else. Um, but this is a character that I actually made during the live streams here. Um, but this one, I don't know why he's, he's got gray pants because I was looking at his pants. This was for the, this, so if you watch the YouTube video on, on the, making these de detailed scribed lines. This is uh, an example of that. So anyway, yeah, here's the character that I made. And he's not really animatable either. It takes a long time to make a character able to uh, be animated. Okay. Gonna hide that tail just for fun. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Here's that folder on the UI. 
Did you try and post something and it wouldn't post? <laughs> Oh, nice, Battle Bear. Did you, um, yeah, like I said, what is this stick? What stick are you talking about? Okay, I think I want to make a couple hairs that are laying on the top and have them come off of the surface. I'll do that later, but I want to do that. Okay, I'm gonna make his fingers next, but I want to adjust his proportions on his arms. Um, it's not a stick, it's a tail. He's a devil, so it's a tail. It's not, see like, yeah. See the tail coming up over his head right here? Yeah, he's kind of a demon or a devil or whatever you wanna call it. Okay, it's a stick up his butt. <laughs> you know. Stick. <laughs> Yeah, I have blur mask right down here on my new user interface. Yay. So I don't have to go digging in my menu for it. Uh, would would it be worth it getting ZBrush as a beginner or just sticking with free software? Um, well, you're on you're you're currently watching the Pixelogic live stream, the makers of ZBrush. So, um what I recommend is you get the free version of ZBrush. It's called ZBrush Core Lite, and you can do a lot of stuff with that. Get your feet wet and just play with it and see if you like digital sculpting. Um, and if, if you do like it and you feel like moving on to the next step, there's ZBrush Core, and uh, that's that is that costs money, but you can dabble even more with that and then uh, finally make the decision of getting the full version of ZBrush. And you can also, they, they offer a subscription version of it if you don't want to buy the whole thing up front you can pay a subscription and just make sure you you like it and try it before you buy it but yeah absolutely this is uh zbrush is the best at digital sculpting so i'll just i'll just say that right now if if you want to get into digital sculpting this is this is what you need to do is to get zbrush okay tried to post an image from my google account but sent it from an email instead since it Okay, yeah, if you can just send it to me in an email at shane.olson at 3dcharacterworkshop.com, I'll check it out. Thank you so much for doing that, by the way. Okay. So let's get some fingers going here. Give him middle, middle bird finger. <laughs> yeah, YouTube is really weird about posting links. ZBrush Core Mini, thanks. What did I call it? ZBrush Core Lite? Yeah, ZBrush Core Mini. Okay, now I hardly ever put knuckles on my characters, but this guy has some serious knuckles going on. And some fingernails.
Let me see if I can show it on my stream. Okay. So you can take, okay, sorry. You, you said you can, you can take any folder and dock it with the buttons in your UI. I see the remesh thing, but I'm, I'm still trying to figure out. Here, let's see. Where, I guess what I don't understand is where are you getting the folder from? Let me go back to the chat so I can see. This, okay. So let me show you the image. I'll bring it down here and show it to you. Um, it looks like this. My head in the way. Okay, so I see remesh, the word remesh, but I'm wondering where you got that from. So remesh here is this, so this is a, is this a custom, like, looks like this is a custom menu, like my menu, right? Like this. Okay, hold on. So let's try it out here. So you can move this here. Let's do, let's go to preferences, enable customize and I can pull this down and stick it. Oh, okay. There you go. It's right here. Okay. Got you. Got you. So you can put the custom menu down on your user interface somewhere. Got it. Got it. Okay. I think the word folder had me confused because when I think of folders, I think of like, like the folder that you, you know, you would control F folder. And that's a folder right here. So I'm like, you can, you can put this folder out on your UI somehow. I didn't understand. Sorry. So but thank you for doing that. I now understand. So, um, okay, I need to, so, so instead of putting it on my user interface, I put that, that's the only thing I put on a hotkey. So I can have it anywhere and it, it can hop, pop up anywhere I want it. So that workshop is free. No, it's not Tiago. Um, if it's free, how can I get it? Well, it's not free, but you can get it over on my website, uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com and check it out and see, see more information about it. If you're interested, the free stuff I have are essentially this, this live stream that you're watching right now. And I'm starting to do YouTube videos again. But if you want an organized, um, well put together course, it is, uh, it's, uh, you, it's the 3d character workshop.com. That's, that's what that's all about. If you're interested. Okay, I'm trying to decide if this is, these fingers are, are long enough. Yeah, that's super cool. Thanks for sending me that, uh, that image. I didn't know you could do that for sure. Okay, I think this guy has actual four normal fingers.
<laughs> hey Shane, how's it going, man? When's when's the weight loss course? Uh, you know, I've actually been thinking about it because so many people ask me like, what did I do? You know, why? Did, how did I lose so much weight? Um, and just I'll just quickly say right now, I've I've gone to a uh, a whole food plant based diet, so basically basically vegan, but I don't like to say vegan because it comes with baggage, you know, like save the animals and the planet and don't eat meat and all that. It's I, I don't eat meat for, for health reasons. And I feel great. I've lost a lot of weight, as you can tell. A lot of I have a lot of energy and uh yeah. It's been great. But it's not for everybody, I'll just say that. Um, it's, it's very, very difficult to do because the world doesn't want you to do that. The current, the current situation. Every, every place you go, every restaurant you eat at, no, nobody wants you eating that way. And it's very, very difficult. I still have tacos, I just don't put meat in them. <laughs> yeah, ground ground beef or chicken. Okay, let's see. So here's a little trick on how to scale something in two axes instead of all three. Um, basically, see how if you hover over this scale, this little box on the gizmo, you can see it says hold alt to scale in X and Y. So if you start scaling this like this and you push alt, now it will scale in the other other axes. So I can scale it. I want to scale it down in just this one and not the other axes. <laughs> Service technician. <laughs> yeah, no cheese, no meat, no dairy. It's been rough because I love that stuff, but. Let's see, I better save this in case. That is okay. That's weird. <laughs> How do you cut out cheese? Uh, yeah, it's um, cheese, cheese and milk was actually the easiest thing to give up for me. The hardest is um, I, I don't do salts as much either. Salt, oil, or sugar. Those are the hardest things for me. Meat was pretty easy. But I like french fries and potato chips and all the oily, salty things. All my tutorials back when digital twos were, that's that's what got me started man that's that's crazy that's how i got started doing the whole teaching thing now they're plural site hey cricket how you doing uh let's see here Oh, come on. All right, but I have, yeah, 
have I've lost about let's see you guys know US pounds I'm down about right now I'd say about 50 pounds I would say between 50 and 75 but 75 at my when I was at my lightest but I've put some back on since then Um, when doing the block out rib cage, waist, deltoids, upper arms, etc., how do you keep the bony landmarks in mind? Any tips for that? Uh, well, the key, and this is, this is going to sound like a jerk, uh, thing to say, but the key for me is reference, like lots and lots of really good reference. Um, like I have a whole Pinterest page dedicated to style or just anatomy and stylized anatomy in general. You can find that if you just look for Shane Olson art on Pinterest, you can find my Pinterest pages. Um, but uh, just and just look look for reference on what it is specifically you're trying to block out. And then eventually you'll just kind of memorize where things go and how they, they uh, work together. Um, in my workshop, I do have a full section on stylized anatomy, but so it, I, I couldn't really go into that right now because it would take way too long to talk about things and all the landmarks and stuff. But um, you have to think about like how the collarbone goes, um, how the, you know, how the pecs tie up, up into underneath the deltoids and all that stuff. But what name on Pinterest? Uh, Shane Olson Art on Pinterest. And then it just depends on the character. Sometimes I'll put in more muscle or more, more pieces than not. Yeah, when, well, when I say jerky answer because, you know, a lot of people are just like, well, just use reference, you know? <laughs> it's like, uh, that's, that's not the answer I wanted to hear. You know what I mean? But it's true. You need more reference. Okay. Now, I think I'm gonna keep his head separate from his neck and his body. And eventually he'll get some fingernails. I don't know if I'm gonna put them in just yet. And yes, I know fingers have an extra knuckle, like this, this extra knuckle right here, but I only exaggerated this middle one, not the, not the little one. So, on purpose, just like, uh, Sandro has done. You can barely see the the uh, last knuckle underneath the fingernails, but it kind of looks weird when you exaggerate those. It's better to exaggerate the ones on the hand right here and the one, the first knuckle. Okay. So let's uh Got really thin wrist. It's fun. Been sculpting for four to five mo months. I've improved a lot and now I'm learning anatomy. I prefer realistic and organic sculpture, but I hate learning anatomy. Any tips on making it more enjoyable? Um, so yeah, more enjoyable is just to like, I, I'm not a big fan of memorizing all of the names of all of the things, just the big, the big muscle groups and how they kind of intertwine and, and interact with each other. That's, that's my favorite. You know, I, I don't, like, I still don't have the stuff memorized. I doubt I ever will. <laughs> hey, what's going on? 
Justin. Justin Gobyfields, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing, brother? Hey, right, Dizzer. Uh, so you can watch all of my past live streams back on uh, Pixelogic's YouTube channel. So just look up uh, Shane Olson Pixelogic, and you'll find. I think I'm getting close to nearing episode 200 or something. So there's a lot, a lot of episodes up there. Hey, man. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Doing well. How about you? We were just talking about tacos and. Uh, it's funny because what what jumped in my brain was that that little taco stand just down the street from you, Justin. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yep, cactus taco. <laughs> my Pinterest name: Shane Olson Art. There you go. Right, dude. Well, they I I went plant based, so I don't eat meat or dairy anymore, which it makes me it makes me sad because I'll miss I'll miss tacos. But if they make a veggie virgin ver, virgin version, that's a <laughs> Freudian slip of the tongue. Uh, then I'm I'm on board. But uh, yeah, man, I got veggie ones. Awesome. Yes, I'm on board. I miss that place. This hand is looking ganked. Janky hand. Got to make some, speaking of uh, wrong anatomy terms, I got to make some thumb meat on the inside of the hand here. Sweet potato cauliflower tacos. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Love that cricket. <laughs> hand butt. Yep, gotta make my hand butt right there. Cause it looks like a butt. You're a butt. <laughs> Something like that. All right. Yeah, we just got to have a, a ZBrush Summit that's live, right? So we can actually hang out again. That's all. I know, I know. I need to, I, ugh. It's, I've missed it for the last two years. It's just sad. It's like my, uh, it's like my family reunion, right? Of all the, all the sculptors. <laughs> Just, are you still in the same, the same uh, place? I know you've moved studios since, right? But uh, what about your apartment? Are you still there? Awesome, very cool. Yeah, COVID hurts everybody's feelings. I did get my booster though. I'm all boosted. <laughs> okay, I want to stitch him all together, but and start to work through some stuff. But uh, I think I'm going to keep the hands separate for now. Try to leave the other green room for some. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to duplicate this body. Um, do I recommend any anatomy courses? Well, um, not to sound boastful, but I recommend my own. And I also recommend, um, let's see, I'm trying to remember. Uh, Scott Eaton's is fantastic. Uh, Proco.com is fantastic. Um, yeah, there's, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, anatomy for Sculptors, check that out. Funny whenever an artist went missing, Paul knew they were at my house. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, okay. 
Yeah, honestly, my favorite has got to be Proko.com. He's a he's a he's a figure drawing instructor, but that's that's Stan Prokopenko is his name. Um, he's a figure drawing instructor, but the way he teaches anatomy is very uh, entertaining to say the least. He just makes it very fun and entertaining, and and you, he just kind of walks you through the different stages and how things work and function in an in in a very enlightening way <laughs> that I like a lot. And actually, uh, I have to give a shout out to Proko because he was one of the first people to help me when I was first making my course in the beginning because he already had his Proko.com uh, going, his course, and he, he gave me a lot of helpful tips and tricks to get my course up and going. So huge shout out to Stan. He's awesome. I just met him for the first time a couple of years ago, pre-COVID at Lightbox Studio. He's great. Okay. Proko butt anatomy. <laughs> oh yeah, Spicer's great too. Yeah, Spicer McLeary streams on Pixo. And uh, Mike Thompson is fantastic at anatomy. Yep. Yeah, both those guys. They're they're more into, well, so is, so when are you going to do a course, Justin? <laughs> yeah, Justin's great at anatomy too. But um, when, uh, if you're into uh, like superhero, like collectibles, Stuff like that they're they're awesome okay mine's a little more simplified it still has all the all the things there but i don't get into all the tertiary muscles you know i just stick with the big groups um i have a question i'm exporting to 3d miniatures all have the same height but when i export it, it has different sides oh you're on schoolism hey duh yeah that's right schoolism sorry about that justin so um yeah, you can find Justin's courses over on Schoolism. I totally, why did I space that? I totally forgot. I have a lot of friends with courses on, on Schoolism. Good old Bobby. Okay. Yeah, realism, I like it, but I like, I, I enjoy looking at it, but um, I don't really enjoy doing it personally myself. Yeah, Mike Thompson, he's a, he's awesome at it. Just gonna give him some elbows here. You know what? I can quickly show you. Hold on a second. Just while while I have you. <laughs> Hold on a second. Where's Discord? I'll give you a little preview of my um What the Oh, interesting. Okay. Um I'll give you a little preview of my stylized course. So what I've done with uh, 3D Character Workshop 2.0 that's coming out very soon, um, I did a bunch of uh, live streams with my students and did uh, weekly weekly challenges. And week number two is Stylized Anatomy. And I can just show you a preview of that video so you can see what, kind of what it covers and how it's, it's not too unlike this, what I'm working on right now. Um, where is it? Sorry, one second. Okay, and I, I have it on YouTube for a minute. Um, it is here. So I'm just gonna kind of breeze through this really quick. I talk about the a simple way to block out the torso and then a compl complex way to block it out with all the extra bits and parts and how everything works and how everything goes. And I go through that same kind of thing with every part um, or every section, like arms. Um, and I show you how to sculpt out arms, um, legs, 
the muscle groups and how they kind of go into each other, but it's all stylized and uh, the difference between male and female anatomy um, and just how to keep it simple or how to block it out with more, you know, a lot more detail. So you can see, how you can take it a lot further than what I'm taking this devil right now. And uh, anyway, a lot of fun. All right. There you go. Little behind the scenes preview of uh, if you're wanting to learn. <laughs> nice, Cricket. Thank you. Thanks for the little uh, testimonial there. Appreciate it. Anyway, if you want to learn simple style as anatomy from me, you can, you can check out my course. It covers anatomy and a whole lot more. Give him some better biceps here. Oh, thanks, Cricket. Yeah, the, the course always comes with, or also comes with a, a, a great, I, I can't really attest to it other than I built it, but it's kind of one of those, uh, if you build it, they will come, and they sure did. Um, I can show you the, the, the behind the scenes of the community as well. And it's a lot like the, the ZBrush Central. I kind of modeled it off of ZBrush Central, but it's my, my own version, so to speak. Um, and this is what it looks like. So this is the care. This is the student form. This is all student work. This is not my work. Um, yeah, you can see how, how just the skill level of people uh, any, anywhere from beginner to advanced. So very, very cool, very active as well. It's not like those courses that you purchase and the communities are just a ghost town, you know, very active. There's a lot of people in there, so. I have amazing students, and uh, one of them just got, another student just got hired on at a game company, or a collectibles company, which I'm super excited about. Get no kickback from saying these things. Oh, I, I'm I'm still working on that cricket. <laughs> I want to get an affiliate link for my students. So in case you have friends that like to join, you can get you can get a kickback. But I really appreciate the feedback. In the testimonial. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, I can't wait to roll out the updates. They're made. It's so. It's going to be so much better than it is now, as far as being able to find stuff. So right now, it's a little bit of a mess. You're another student just got hired at a AAA studio. Nice. Um, do you use mouse and keyboard or a tablet and a pen? I use a keyboard and a, a Cintiq or a tablet. I, yeah, I use a, I use a tablet. Don't, you can use a pen unless you're sculpting. Um, I don't recommend using a mouse if you're actually sculpting because there's no pressure sensitivity. It's either zero or 100. There's no in between. So um, it's really hard to get subtle strokes with a mouse. 
you can't do tapers like thick to thin lines. Okay. Sorry, I'm taking a, a long time on this guy to, again today, <laughs> but let's let's stitch him together. I think I'm gonna keep this uh, the arms separate as well. Yeah, I have an older 27 inch Cintiq. Oops, I didn't mean to use that. Let's split this off. Come on. Oh, split hidden is what I'm looking for. Not, there we go. Thank you so much, Neil. Okay, I'm also gonna split off his legs. Okay. Yeah, let's join all this together. Okay, so I'm going to apply the dynamic subdivisions. Actually, I've been finding that stitching works well when I use uh, Tessimate. So just to even out the geometry across everything. Yeah, something like this. Because if you have um, if you have similar density, these pieces will stitch together a lot, a lot better. Let's go a little bit tighter density. Yeah, maybe like that. Okay. So let's stitch this together. Remesh by union. Starting off as junior environment artist, but we'll be working towards characters because that's all that's in my portfolio and they hired me. Nice. <laughs> okay, accept and turn symmetry back on. Okay, so this is now stitched. If you, we zoom in, you can see how the stitching is working around these objects like this. And now we can use Sculptors Pro at, let's see, a very similar density like this. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do, uh, change it. Okay, hold on a second. I guess I can tessimate it again now that it's stitched and it will smooth this stuff out, but I like doing it by hand. There we go. I wanted to move this slider, not the decimate slider, just so it's the same, a similar density. So yeah, I can just kind of come through here and smooth this out. And I can make it even a little more dense if I want to, but I think this is pretty good. Be a little smaller. Okay. Let's turn the Z intensity up on the smooth. is pretty uh what am i trying to say it's um therapeutic is the word <laughs> just to kind of it's kind of like uh you know pressure washing your driveway or something just smoothing all this out
to the ridge above the abs would be the rib cage? Yes. And then this is like the lats coming down here. Yep, the rib cage. It's, I, I made it a little deeper than, than I typically do. And I could probably pull this down more like this. But, you know, it is stylized. And yeah, there's actually a, a pressure washing simulator on Steam that my, my son likes to play. Abram, I have, and I like them a lot. On the, they're they're fun on the go. But uh, this is this is the uh, ZBrush um, Twitch slash YouTube channel that you're watching. So I like to keep the conversation on on ZBrush. But yes, I have, and I I enjoy them. But they and they also I have to say they also work very very well. Um, with in conjunction with ZBrush. So if you start a sculpt on the go, you can bring it home and import it into ZBrush and kind of finish it up, which is nice. And a, a lot of my uh, sculpting friends use it that way. Okay. You can kind of see how these uh, these muscles blend in together. Okay, we can do the same thing with his arms. And the reason I didn't stitch his arms into his body is because I didn't want his armpits to stitch closed. That's kind of a... It can be a problem. <laughs> so we'll stitch those together later. I usually raise the arms up so they you know they're more straight out rather than up and down. Hey Steven, thank you so much. Um uh I have a YouTube channel I, that I, I I'm just starting to post to. Um, but here I usually have, this is almost, I'm, I'm getting close to my 200th episode on Pixelogic's live stream channel, but I do have, uh, my own YouTube channel. It's actually called the 3D Character Workshop. You can see it right above here. That's the same name as my YouTube channel. Um, and I'm going to be starting to, uh, release new tips and tricks videos every single week. I just started my first one last week and I'm going to release a, a new one this week. So you can check me out there too. And you can find me at 3dcharacterworkshop.com as, as well if you want my brushes. Okay. So let's duplicate this. So what do you say? What is the best way to get stylized art? I mean, what keywords should I search for? Could you show a demo? I, like, what do you mean get stylized art? Are you talking about concept or sculpts or what do you mean exactly? Okay. Sure. I mean, concept art that could be borrowed to change into 3D. Um, ArtStation, uh, Pinterest. Those, those are your best bets. Um, you could look for a cartoon concept, cartoon character concepts. Um, but. Uh, I would just make sure you reach out to the original artist. You can see that I've credited Sandro right here because this is his original design and I have permission to sculpt this. So um, 
yeah, just make sure that you ask for permission and give credit to the artist when you're, if you post it anywhere. Let's see, remix by Union. Yeah, ArtStation is a great resource. My favorite is Pinterest. I like Pinterest because it gives you uh, suggestions when you find something you like. Oh, thanks, Neil, I, I forget, I forgot. So I'm gonna have to do a mirror and then a mirror and weld. There we go. Uh, draw your own. Now, I actually, I actually suggest against drawing your own unless you're a professional illustrator, character designer. Because I'll just say right now, most people can't. And also, it depends on what you're wanting to do. Um, my entire career, I've always sculpted somebody else's designs for a living because I'm not an illustrator. Maybe, maybe you know, there are some people, like friends of mine, like uh, Matt Thorpe and Dylan Ekron, they're, they're great illustrators as well as sculptors. But usually when you're getting paid to sculpt a character, it's someone else's design. But if you, if you are already a professional illustrator, and you're just looking to like maybe sculpt one of your characters, do it. It all depends on what what your uh, what your skill levels are, you know. Is it still off? Sorry, I, that's okay. I'm in the zone. Whoa. Okay, we're gonna do it. Mirror and weld and turn it on. There. doing digital art for 10 years. I have a bachelor's in art. I have traditionally drawn since I was a child. I can't concept design for sure. <laughs> That's hilarious. Basically, I'm using ZBrush more and more for maquettes um, for illustration work. Oh, nice. That's awesome one, Gray. So um, actually, that's kind of like Mike Thompson. He he started out, well, he's an, he is a fantastic illustrator and he uses ZBrush to complement or help help his uh, character designs and illustrations. It's, it can be, ZBrush can be a very powerful tool for that. Especially since it helps you with things like like volumes, forms, shading, you know, all the things that are difficult to kind of get into your brain sometimes. I missed the beginning of this. Can you quickly explain how you made the main shapes? Did you make it all from a sphere? Um, so Steven, I, this is my third episode uh, on making this guy. Um, so if you want this, it's, it's already, it's already recorded and you can watch it back on Pixel Logic's YouTube channel. Um, and you can just watch how I build it, but I use primitive objects. That's this brush right here. And I use just basically spheres that I stretch out into shape and make these, uh, these blocked out shapes like, like this.
so I I worked uh, I worked for Disney Interactive for ten years, and I worked on Disney Infinity. You can see the characters, well, maybe back up behind me. And uh, so that's kind of where you might have seen my work before. All right, dude. Have a good one. Thanks for hanging out. Sweet. Yep. No problem. Yeah, no kidding, hen toys. <laughs> Yeah, that that genre is kind of uh, went the way of the guitar heroes. <laughs> I hate to say it. Okay, let's see here. Rinse, repeat. Okay, I'll try not to forget to, to uh, turn mirroring back on after this meal. <laughs> Let's see. Blue mesh by Union. Accept and mirror. <laughs> All right, I remembered. Currently working on sculpting Stylus character, so I'd love to learn from this. Yeah. Like I said, I have a whole online course if you're interested in it. Pets of Warcraft. Nice name. I like the vid you put on your channel. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Hope you didn't delete the rest of the old videos there. Uh, so, well, I, I hid some of the old, old ones, but I'm making new ones. Like, which one specifically were you looking for? Because <laughs> I had some really old ones, but they're over on Vimeo, and I had one where I made a moose head that was, yeah, I, I, I hid that one. I worked on Skylanders for a little bit. It was super fun to do toys and game models at the same time, but I'm back to toys full time. Oh, awesome. Nice. Yeah, I love, I actually love Skylanders. I love playing it with my kids. It was, it was a good game and it may or may not have inspired Disney Infinity heavily. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were, they were pretty much first to the table. Skylanders. Can't wait for more. Well, they're coming. Okay, speaking of which, I kind of want to try something because, I mean, there's only 100, well, only, there's 181 people watching right now, which is awesome across like YouTube, Facebook, all the sources, but I kind of wanted to try and make, maybe, maybe make a YouTube video at the same time I'm, I'm streaming. Just a little, a little hint, like a little tips and tricks video, like maybe test it right now and see what you guys think. Because I'm going to build on the video I just posted. So, um, is your course mostly aimed at beginners or intermediate users? Um, it goes all the way from beginner all the way to advanced. So there are people that have no ZBrush skills, and I I walk them through their very first day in ZBrush, and then I'm also have uh, uh, quite a few students that are getting hired at professional studios like Blizzard and Funko and places like that. So. It covers the whole, the whole gambit. <laughs> so, okay. So, let's see. So in the last video on YouTube, the, the last video I showed you how to 
scribe in detail etched lines, okay? And if you haven't seen that yet, go check it out on my YouTube channel. Um, but what if you have scribe lines like in these horns? Okay, for example, so let's check out these horns. Okay. Whoop. And if, if I were to do the chisel method with these, with these horns, um, it would kind of be a pain in the butt to do. Okay, let's just check it out really quick. I'm going to store a morph target on these horns. And um, if I were to try and scribe this, oh, let me add some more, some more uh, subdivision levels. Let's see, I need to just subdivide this up to, let's do it ab about to a million <laughs> and try and scribe this. Oh, it's too, oh, that's why, because it has dynamic subdivision turned on, which I don't want. Okay. So subdivision levels and dynamic subdivision levels do not work well together. So if you're going to have one, don't have both. Um, okay, so now if I try to scribe these lines around the horns like this, you can see that if I try and pick up and scribe this again, it's not going to look good, right? And it's, it's going to be kind of difficult to wrap all the way around these horns. So I'm going to show you a trick how to do this or how to uh, scribe lines around that without um, with using a live boolean method okay so i'm going to get rid of those subdivision levels go back down to this where it does not have subdivision levels yet because this method you can't use with a mesh that has subdivision levels and then i also want to go in here and put uh, poly groups and split them all the way down the horns wherever i want to put one of these uh, cuts okay so Let's use this uh, select lasso, and I'm going to hide these loops every so often, okay? And how I'm doing this is I just, I'm using select lasso, and then if I hold down control plus shift on one of these edges and then tap it, it's going to disappear like this, okay? So something like this, okay? Now, I, I can do something with, the, with this method just as it is and i'm going to hit Control w and basically what that does is that puts everything visible into a, a new polygroup so if i unhide the polygroups that were hidden now you can see i have stripes these are just polygroups okay so what i can do with this z modeler is i'll click the z modeler brush and then if i hover over one of these faces push space bar i can go to extrude and then choose polygroup all. And then I can just grab one of these faces and push it in like so. And then if I turn on dynamic subdivision again, you can kind of see it gives a sort of the, the look that I'm after, but not really. It's it's kind of a an extruded look. I, I want it to, you'll see what I'm gonna do, okay. <laughs> I want it to have more of that scribed line look that I was showing you before in the last video, okay. So I'm gonna turn on dynamic subdivisions again so it's nice and smooth. But I wanna use these sections as um, polygroups. So basically I'm gonna use, I'm gonna set up these polygroups a little differently. Okay, so let's, let's start over back to where we were and I'm gonna cut these out. I'm gonna turn on double and then I want to adjust it so the camera, I can see, um, essentially I can drag this uh, selection set around and then either, either surround that selection or hide it. I prefer to hide it. So I'm gonna go around it again like this. And you'll notice that I'm using the, the straight edge of the select lasso. I'm just holding down control plus shift with select lasso. Okay, and then I'm drawing from one side around to the other using that straight line. And I can also add a uh, space bar to this to move this selection around. And then if I add Alt or a command on an apple, essentially I can hide it. It's not deleting it, it's just hiding it, okay? So now if I hit Control W, it's going to put this new section that I'm seeing in another polygroup. And then I'm gonna walk up this again, 
do this again, hide these. And I wanna make sure that there's no kind of rogue faces hanging out. Okay, make sure it's a, a nice clean selection. Hit Control W again, and then just continue to walk up the horn. See, there's, there's two rogue faces, so I can also just hide those. Hit Control W and put it in an, another one. And then let's see, we'll put one right here. Control W. And it, like I said, I'm just essentially just walking up the horns, making uh, slices. Okay, and one, let's do one more at the very, very tip. Just hide that, Control W. Now check it out. It's kind of hard to see. Let's change these to a different color. You can just isolate uh, any poly group by hitting Control Shift, tapping on that poly group, and then just hitting Control W until you find a color that you like. Okay, so now we have striped horns. All right, now this is the trick. I mean, that, that, those are some cool tricks too, but this is the real trick I wanted to show you. With any curve mesh, um, you, it has a curve, but you can, you can tell it where you want the curve to be exactly. And I want the curves to be exactly in between these new poly groups that I made. So uh, underneath stroke, if you go up to stroke and you go down to curve right here, actually it's curve functions, there's this button right here, it's called Frame Mesh, okay? So if I click on Frame Mesh, it's going to look for borders, polygroups, and creased edges. I only want polygroups for this demonstration, so I'm gonna turn border off and creased edges off. But you can also use those to frame the mesh with these curves, okay? So keep that in mind whenever you want to lay these curves down exclusively or explicitly, whatever you wanna say, um, you can use any of these three or, or all three things, okay? Then when you hit frame mesh, you'll see that it puts curves in between all of the poly groups. Well, now that you have these curves, you can select any curve brush and, and basically stroke that curve, th that brush along these curves. Okay, so let's grab a, br uh, so if I hit B, C, that will show you the curve brushes like this curve tube, curve tri -fill, anything that starts with curve, curve strap. We're gonna use this, uh, curve multi-tube actually this curve tubes i'll try this one and then if i the curves are still there just not selected if i click on one of these you'll see that it makes these giant curves okay but here i'm gonna undo that because i want to turn symmetry off for a moment because it's doubling the curves across the symmetry line i don't want double curves i just want single curves and then i'm going to making sure you're not in the light blue brush Make sure you're out here so your brush is red. Um, you can change the size to smaller and that's gonna indicate the size of those tubes, right? Then I'll click on the curve and it makes these all these tubes, okay? Now this is the, the fun part about this. Now that I have, um, let's make them a little smaller. One more time, okay? I can also make them, I can go bigger and click on it again. Um, but that's about the size I want to have these curves, okay? So now what I can do is um, say I'm done. I like these curves uh, or I like these tubes that I just made. I can click on the surface to make the curves go away. I'm done with them, okay? That's how you make, uh, make a cur your curves be go away, essentially. Okay, now I want to split these off to a subtool because... I can't subtract these tubes from the horns right now because there's part of the same subtool. But since they're all in, uh, all masked off, what I can do is hit split unmasked points. And let's show all these, okay? I'm going to turn on dynamic subdivisions again so these horns are smooth. Now I'm gonna slick on, uh, I'm going to select these tubes by holding down Alt and just clicking on them. Now what I can do is turn on live booleans and it's not gonna do anything yet because these aren't set to subtractive. But if I go to my subtool menu and I go up here and I switch this subtool to subtractive and turn off my wireframes by hitting shift F, you'll see that these now are being uh, subtracted from the surface. Okay, now one of the reasons I put this uh, circle, this depth circle right here is because I can adjust how deep those uh, tubes cut into the surface when I'm making those tubes. So you, now that I see these, I can see that these are, this is going too deep into the horn. 
So I'd have to go back and uh, either adjust them there or I can go into this brush. Let's turn off Live Boolean for a second. And let's just say I want this to be a little uh, not, not so deep or not so uh, thick or whatever. I can just grab this gizmo. And if you hover over this yellow square, you can see that it says Control to Inflate. Well, I can just hold down Control, click on this uh, square, and I can shrink these up. And that's going to shrink them along normals, okay? So along their surface normals or along the way those faces are facing, I can just shrink them. And now I can turn Live Boolean back on and you can see uh, that they're smaller. Now this, this looks an awful lot like what I just showed in the last video, which was uh, how to scribe lines into your surface. Well, this way you can scribe lines into your surface with complete accuracy rather than trying to drag a line, uh, you know, down some pants or something like that. You can uh, do, do it very, very accurately and non-destructively. So just like using layers, this is very non-destructive. But what's a little bit different than this is you can, it'll take on whatever color that these, uh, these rings have. So if I fill the horns here, let's do something fun. Let's fill the horns with uh, this dark color, okay? Uh, let's do a fill object, and then we'll grab these rings right here. And I'm going to uh, just do a red color. Why not? And fill, the, fill them with red. See, check that out. They'll take on the red color. And now we have Christmas horns. So there you go. There's, that's how to scribe lines precisely with curves. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this preview of the video that I'm going to be releasing next week on my YouTube channel. So thanks for hanging out. And uh, that wraps up my time for this week. Um, thanks for hanging out. Hey, Jimmy just popped in. Hey, what's up, Jimmy? <laughs> so, and I, yeah, speaking of uh, Jimmy and Sandro, um, Jimmy just did a, I mean, he not, not just did, I should say Sandro just commented on one of Jimmy's amazing uh, Robin Hood and Little John sculpts that he did because it's so awesome. <laughs> hey, no worries, man. No worries. So, um, yep, once again, uh, I do have a course online. It's called the 3D Character Workshop. And yes, I am working on an updater, updated user interface for ZBrush 2022. This is a preview of that. It should be coming out within the next uh, like week or so, hopefully sooner. Um, and also get on my uh, emailing list if you're, if you're interested in getting a uh, Black Friday promo on my course that's coming up. So, all right, guys. Thank you and take care. I will see you all next Monday. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for hopping in, Jimmy, even though it wasn't for very long. So thanks, you guys. I appreciate it. Hey, he's got, <laughs> he's got red hooves. That's the best. Why do devils paint their hooves red? Wait for it. To hide in the strawberry patch. <laughs> okay. Have you ever seen a devil in the strawberry patch? No, it must work. Ah! <laughs> All right, guys, take care. We'll see you. All right, I'm out.